Hi, I'm Mike Roebuck, and I'm here with Sangeet Chaudhary, CEO of Platformation Labs. Uh, Sangeet, can you just go over the uh, presentation that you just gave here? Sure, absolutely. I framed the idea of uh, the opportunity that telcos have in the coming platform revolution. When we think about platforms, we often think about how other companies have taken the opportunity from telcos. First with uh, the rise of Apple and Android with their platform business models, and then with the over-the-top players like uh, Skype, WhatsApp, all of which were platforms and started building their own ecosystems. Uh, telcos have been more of uh, in the traditional model of being a dumb pipe, then that's, that's the term that we've been using about them. But uh, Going forward, I believe that there's a huge opportunity, not in consumer ecosystems so much, but in industrial ecosystems, in the digitization of heavy industry, in uh, smart cities, in the digitization of B2B supplier ecosystems. And that's the idea where I believe that telcos can enable the companies that will build ecosystems in heavy industry, in uh, a lot of these uh, other areas. And so um, my key... Um, the key uh, essence of my talk was to lay out how telcos can position themselves as the right strategic partners to benefit from uh, this revolution. So what do you see as the key uh, uh, opportunities for CSPs today as far as investments go? One of the most important things that uh, CSPs need to do is understand that enabling IoT ecosystems is different from uh, their traditional business model that they've been used to where they've been focused more as infrastructure vendors. Um, in, in IoT ecosystems, the, the business is not in, uh, or, or the money is not really in monetizing volume and traffic, a volume of traffic or number of connections, which is being the traditional value capture model. In IoT ecosystems, the, the money uh, is really in guaranteeing performance for your clients, because you help them capture the data, you help them uh, get of actual performance out of that data. And in order to do that, you stop focusing just on s providing the sensor network infrastructure. You start augmenting that with the higher layers of the stack, which is in terms of data analytics capabilities, as well as augmentation and automation capabilities. And this is what I shared during my talk as well, that uh, y you can either continue investing in the infrastructure side only and build those skills only, which would not give you a competitive position, but if you want a competitive position in this ecosystem play, you need to focus on invest your investments on getting the right analytical stack in place and the, the, the right automation and augmentation capabilities. And so I believe that this needs to be a strategic priority to move investments in this direction. The, the investments are not just in terms of money, but more so in terms of organizational uh, capabilities where you might have to the engineer re rethink the kind of skills that you need in your organization when you move in this direction. What are the critical things that CSPs need to focus on in order to be successful? What I believe is important when we look at the opportunity that Internet of Things provides to CSPs is that in the Internet of Things you need four components to have a successful ecosystem. You need data capture, for which CSPs will provide the sensor infrastructure. You need the ability to spread data reliably, for which you need the network infrastructure that CSPs provide. But then you also need a central platform to analyze all of this data and communicate that back as learning and as decision. And that is where the analytics part of it, as well as the automation and augmentation capabilities start becoming important. And the reason CSPs need all four of these to be successful is that you could very much focus on just the sense of the network, but you would not hold the choke point on the value because the value your clients will get is with the data. And so it is the ownership of data that becomes really important. Now, when we talk about data ownership from a CSP perspective, we are treading uh, shaky ground over here because CSPs have traditionally been very sore about the fact that data ownership has been so regulated. Uh, I believe that there is uh, one angle which is around regulations and uh, hopefully regulations will start playing out in a much more uh, CSP friendly fashion when we start moving away from consumers to, to in industrial ecosystems because the, the kinds of data concerns that are there are very different. But the other part of it is also to start thinking in terms of data because traditionally the way CSPs have not just thought but also measured their success has been in terms of infrastructure. 
And this shift of infrastructure thinking to data first thinking is, is a critical shift that uh, CSPs will need to make if they, if they want to hold a competitively strong position. So if you were the CMO of a CSP, where would you be spending the majority of your time to guarantee your success? Great question. This, this aligns back to what I just shared about how uh, CSPs need to shift their thinking from infrastructure to data. Uh, as a CMO, I would focus less on selling infrastructure and more at positioning the CSP as a strategic partner to provide ecosystem outcomes for, for uh, the client. And uh, the, the way I would do that is that from a client perspective, if I'm a CSP, my client is typically somebody who's uh, enabling an IoT ecosystem. In that case, the client's needs are threefold. First of all, the client needs a vision about what this ecosystem is going to be, what, what is the new value that is going to be created with uh, this investment. And as a CMO, I would best be served if I sit with my client, understand what they're trying to achieve and help them frame the vision for this ecosystem. That's the first part. The second part is once you have a vision, you need an enabling platform for that, an infrastructure, a set of services, a set of tools that enable you to achieve that vision. And so I would then not only position what, this, what my CSP provides to the client, but also try to understand how I can best uh, enable what they're trying to enable and then factor that back to, to my company uh, as, the, as the face of the company. And then we come to the third part, which is you've got the vision, you have the platform, how do you convince the ecosystem to join you? Because the ecosystem has to invest in joining you. If, if you are uh, a manufacturing company, then your suppliers have to come onto the platform or, or your uh, logistics partners have to come onto the platform. How do you make that happen? And there again, as a CMO, uh, I would want my client's success to be tied to my success so that when the client wins, I win, I win. And so the client also believes that I'm the right strategic partner. And so I would want to shape how these outcomes would work out for the ecosystem so that the client is then able to position these outcomes and get the ecosystem to participate. So it is this three-tiered approach of crafting the vision, laying a platform, and then sh explaining how the ecosystem benefits from the platform in terms of the outcomes they get out of it. I would want to stay with my client through the three steps rather than have them build a vision, just come in and push my infrastructure and then get out of the game. And so as, as a CMO, if I were to capture value out of this chain, I, I believe that is where I would spend my time. Great. Very interesting and informative. Thank you, Sankey. Thank you.